run in a few minutes, so you should be able to get a good view wherever you are. So the 18 species in the wild, now the biggest penguin is the emperor penguin. And they're probably taller than some of you in the audience. They stand at about four foot tall. Now the smallest penguin is the little blue penguin and they're just 30 centimetres tall. So very small, very cute. Our penguins are quite average size for penguins. Uh, so the two different types we have here. We have the humpback penguins, these are these guys here, swimming in the water. And they come from the coastal regions of Chile and Peru. Now, have we all watched Happy Feet here? Yeah. yeah. Remember a character called Lovelace? Lovelace is a rock copper penguin with those yellow head feathers. We have a very special rock copper penguin here. Ricky the rock copper. Have we all see Ricky? So give him a wave. <laughs> Ricky is a bit of a show off here at Penguin Beach. He, is, he loves the limelight. In fact, Ricky is even on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, search Ricky the Rock Copper and you'll make him day. You make his day by adding him there. Now most people think that penguins just come from cold, snowy places, but some of them come from quite hot, sunny places. So uh, they don't mind days like today. You find them in Antarctica, you can find them in Africa, Australia, um, and South America as well. So I want everyone now to shout out and be nice and loud what they think penguins love to eat. Yes, they love to eat fish. They eat about 30 fish in a day. They're very great. They do love their fish indeed. About 80% of their diet consists of fish, but a lot of them eat things like squid and krill. Apparently, if a penguin eats a lot of krill, then their poo turns pink. But we've not got any krill for them today. We've just got some fish for them, some capelin. Now, penguins are birds, but can penguins fly? No. No, they can't. It'd be very funny if they could, but they can't fly. Uh, but they are fantastic. Swimmers is a uh, showing off at the moment. Now when they're walking about, they can be a bit clumsy, they can be a bit comical, but when they're in the water, they are incredibly agile. Is it showing off now? Porpoising, showing off their swimming ability for you today at Penguin Beach. All penguins can die 100 metres underwater, and the emperor penguins can die 500 metres underwater. They stay underwater for about 18 minutes. So the best divers out of all the aquatic birds, they are very but that is just one way of penguins adapt to life in the water and there are all other things. If you look at their feathers, they have two layers of feathers. The outer layer is like a waterproof jacket, keeps them nice and dry in the water. And then they have an inner layer where they have downy feathers and this is like a woolly jumper. Now you might notice at the moment some of our penguins look a bit, uh, look a bit scruffy. Those ones at the back sir, uh, Ricky, he's got a bit of a bald patch there. This is because every year penguins molt their outer layer of feathers. Uh, to, so uh, they have these downy feathers showing, which makes them look a bit comical, but that's what's happening with some of our penguins. You see these bright coloured, the bright white uh, penguins at the moment, they've gone through their molts and they're showing off their new feathers at the moment. So I'll just tell you a bit more about the Humboldt penguins. So they come from the coastal regions of Chile and Peru, and they live in large colonies. And they actually do make for life when it's breeding season. They'll come back to their colonies. The male will get there first. He'll make sure the burrow is nice and tidy. Not necessarily clean because it's mainly made out of penguin poo. Make sure it's nice and tidy and then the female will come along, inspect it and then she'll lay her eggs. So let's talk a bit more about the beaks as well. Now, for all those cheeky adults who think it's quite tempting to have a beak show that have a stroke of those penguins, I wouldn't advise that. They've got quite a nasty nip on them. And this is because their beaks are hooked so they can catch the fish when they're in the water. And the penguins actually have a spiky uh, tongue as well to help them grasp uh, the fish so they can swallow it down into their bellies. Now the humpbacks have got the pink marks around their beaks and Ricky's got these yellow head feathers. But all penguins have a black back and a white belly. This is a special type of camouflage called counter shading. So when they're in the ocean, this black back blends in with the dark sea below. And the white belly <laughs> blends in with the white sky above. So it's a good way for them to escape their predators. These are not penguins, these are cheeky seagulls. They're very noisy seagulls, do keep your eye on these guys. Now let's talk a bit more about Ricky. So rock coppers come from the Falkland Islands. And they come from very rocky terrain. So if Ricky's demonstrating at the moment, they're very good at hopping from rock to rock. Hopefully we'll get another demonstration in a minute. He's, he's, he's preparing himself. There we go. Demonstration there of how they've got their name. Hopping from rock to rock. 
Now he's got these yellow head feathers, this is because he's a crested penguin, so he uses these feathers for display purposes. So it'll tell uh, other occupants how they're feeling, if they wave the head from side to side, that's the males flirting with the females. So these feathers are for display purposes. Now like I said before, Ricky is on Facebook. Do you just do search for Ricky the Rock Hopper, add him as a friend, and you'll get regular uh, status updates of what's going on here at Penguin Beach. And it's also really cool to have a penguin as a friend on Facebook. But if you do really fall in love with Ricky, you can actually adopt Ricky the Rock Hopper. This does not mean that you get to take Ricky home. I do not advise that. He's a lot of fish, he's a leather dealer, and he's not toilet trained. But what this does mean is that the money you use to adopt Ricky goes towards the fantastic work that we do here in ZSL. Because ZSL, the Zoological Society in London, is a charity that runs London Zoo, which they do, and it runs conservation work in over 50 countries. Because sadly, a lot of other penguins in the wild are actually endangered, which is very sad to hear. But ZSL wants to do something about that. And they do work out in the wild to help save uh, wild penguins. Do have a look at base camp that tells you a bit more about that on our website. But in fact, guys, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you very much for coming to London Zoo today. By coming to London Zoo, seeing our penguins, having their lunch, getting a picture of Ricky, you are helping wild animals because the money from your tickets goes towards our conservation work as well. So give yourselves a pat on the back for that. Now, if you want to find out more uh, do, about penguins, do head over to Base Camp. That's where I'll be at the end of the talk. I'll be happy to talk about these guys all day. As I say, Ricky is showing off. He's a bit of a show up here at Penguin Beach. And I hope the seagulls didn't get you. If anyone was got a by a seagull and I've got pooed on, do come to me. I've got some stickers saying I got pooed on at London Zoo. I do need to see the proof of the poo though. Uh, but I will be heading to Base Camp now. But thank you for listening, guys. And I hope you've had a lovely day here at London Zoo. Thank you.